<laughs> all right, now you got me all kinds of crazy. So, um, <laughs> yeah, all right. So, and then uh, the I was reading up on your stuff in that. All right, Jones Memorial Carpet is that a bad local uh, cable access commercial in Jeff's Market? <laughs> because I'm not sure, familiar with it, Mark. What? Tell me what that one's about a little bit. Here's, okay, here's the light bulb joke that goes with that. Okay. How many Methodists does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> change the light bulb? Chamber. My grandma donated that light bulb. We're not changing that light bulb. <laughs> we need a committee to investigate it is what <laughs> I was going to go for, but that's pretty good too. Is there a memorial pl uh, plaque written next to the light bulb then? If exactly. You're <laughs> that's exactly. the kind of thing we're talking about. And, the, and what happens is typically youth pastors say, that's the stupidest thing in the world. They don't understand I'm trying to do youth ministry here. Mm -hmm. They're more afraid of the carpet than they are of Satan, you know, and they get all worked up about it. And what we wanted to say in that chapter was, you know, people care about their stuff. Yeah. And if, if we want to be invited into that home, we need to care about the stuff. And, um, you know, and, and we, we talked to an administrator who said, I know that things are going to get dirty. I know things are going to get used. I don't care about that. What I care about is... People who disregard, uh, you know, the, the normal uh, set of politeness and and, and, uh, and and care for the stuff we have around the place. And if you break it, tell us. Mm -hmm. You know. So anyway, it's it's about saying, let's get over the fact that people don't care about us. Let's get let's, let's be grown ups and, and uh, take good care of the space. So it's the sacred it's the sacred items of the church. I I I, I really was. I was like, is that like cable access commercial? <laughs> Jones Memorial. <laughs> Like, um, well, actually, um, that would be pretty funny. I, you know, it's it's actually uh, an iconic phrase that Mike Iaconelli used to use mm -hmm. for to churches that were that were stuck that they were concerned about the Jones Memorial carpet. Uh, so we're sort of stealing a little Mike Iaconelli. Uh, you'll find some improvement in, in, from there. I didn't heard that one though from him. That, that yeah. but you know, those are my early years of. If you just you YouTube specialty. Mike Atkinelli, you could hear him talk about yeah. Jones Memorial Carpet. I'm right. positive. We'll How many times have you been at a board meeting and they called you in to say, listen, the Jones Memorial Carpet has got a stain on it and it must be your fault. And from now on, you can't meet in the Jones Memorial Carpet Room. I'm thinking to myself, what kind of church has somebody donate a room and donate a carpet, and then they don't want to have anything happen to it? They want to be able to come back in 20 years and go, look at that carpet, it looks just like new. Are they out of their minds? If they're a church that's worth their salt, they're going to walk into a board meeting and go, you're not going to believe this. You know the Jones Memorial Carpet, it's only been there two years. It's worn out. Woohoo! that. So... The uh, the other thing you were I was interested when um, you were talking about at least you lead it into the when looking for a job you had made a differential of like working with acquaintances over friends I was kind of that sounded that was intriguing to me it's like how would you maybe how how are y'all separating those two out and and why is some of that a little that beneficial to to work with your acquaintances over your friends more so well that's a that's a great point. Um, if, um, if I'm just talking to my friends, um, my friends basically are the people who know the very same people that I know. Mm -hmm. um, and so they probably already introduced me and thought of me in terms of introducing me to the people that, that they might know. So typically our acquaintances, our acquaintances are not going to be so helpful. I mean, our friends are not going to be so helpful in helping us network into places that we are not already connected. And, you know, the truth is, in terms of hiring, most folks are looking for, um, they're looking for names that come um, not through, uh, a, you know, like a website. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're looking for somebody they know recommending them. And so if, if we can know a friend of a friend who can get us in touch with the search committee chair, there's often an interview that can happen informally um, that can often put us in a place in line that's really different than just having our name on the top of the resume pile. Okay. Yeah, like I always say, there's a trust economy when you work in those kinds of network mm -hmm. environments. That, yeah. that, that, trust that, that, economy is exactly yeah. what we were thinking. Yeah. Well, I'll write that into the next book. I think you should. <laughs> right before you get, right before I get fired, fired again. <laughs> I like uh, the uh, I was gonna say. All right, so um, you've got you're covering uh, 
churches. You've got them all square. Every church is squared away, and they're going to do good interview processes now. Um, what's something that youth pastor can like? Probably a key tip for interviewing and and kind of being prepared for an interview. Uh, church so they can put, You know that's that's a problem in, in circles. <laughs> Jeff, there's a story with that that I'll have to share with you off air sometime. <laughs> Actually, you can probably look it up on YouTube now that I think about it. <laughs> so what would be one of those interviewing tips or, or things that's just like a critical must-do for a youth, for someone who's wanting to, I guess, put their best self forward in an in interview? I already gave my best answer. Uh, well, uh, the, I think the most important thing that we can do, uh, help youth pastor candidates do, is to um, really ask curious questions. Mm -hmm. uh, um, could y'all go do that somewhere else? Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, th thanks a lot. We're, we're trying to be serious and do, well, I'm doing a TV show. do excellence. and. <laughs> I mean, they're only bouncing around on the bed there in the hotel room. I don't emphasize the importance of what I'm doing right here. As you were saying, uh, the most important thing a candidate can do is to be fascinated with and mm -hmm. curious about the church where they're interviewing. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, most candidates expect to be center stage. They expect everybody else to do all the work and be fascinated with them rather than coming in and trying to find out as much as they can about the church. And just like a good doctor, listening for symptoms, listening for what's going on, and just offering a little bit of insight about what's uniquely happening in that church rather than just kind of giving stock answers that are disconnected from the context. Hmm. I like that. I, I like the interviewing as a doctor. I like it's good. You should probably do something like this for a living. We're going to write you, a book about it, I you, think. Yeah, <laughs> you've got some good good ideas, Mark. I mean, I don't know where you've been all these years. but I've been, uh, I've been trying to work on a website with my friend Gavin. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, those things happen, too. You know, the other thing that we we're telling people, and it's not really about the interview, but <laughs> the, the idea that you take responsibility for this process mm -hmm. in a way that doesn't set you up as a victim or an anxious person or someone who's desperate, but you just trust that you're being called, that, uh, that God's got a thing out there for you, and if you methodically work a process, it will show up. Um, it takes more than just praying and hoping, and it takes more than just worrying. It takes a very methodical process. <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, people will say, I just haven't heard from anybody. We'll say, well, is this important to you? Oh, it's hugely important. It's the most important thing in my life, for crying out loud. Well, how much time did you spend on it today? Yeah. Mm. Well, you don't understand. <laughs> People will call me back. They don't, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with churches, but they don't call back. And, you know, the fact is we need to be the professionals mm -hmm. who are helping these folks who are probably amateurs work through the process. And we'll take responsibility as the person looking for the job to, to be the initiator, to be the one who uh, knocks on the door and reminds them that we're still here, all those kinds of things, and to work it hard. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's actually part of the interview process. Part of what the search committee ought to be looking for is what kind of initiative does this person take? Yeah. And right. um, are, are they the kind of person that makes one call and gives up? Or are they the kind of person that continues to pursue kids even after those kids don't call them back, even if the family seem to disengage? And so that kind of relentless pursuit is actually, uh, even though search committees don't know, that's part of the interview process. Yeah, they might not. They might not write that down. Like, oh, this person has really good initiative, and they've been like on my doorstep. Right. They they may not say that, but they'll just have an inkling. Like, oh, this person's got to go get them. They, they'll, yeah, it's playing in the background. So right. yeah, good deal. All right, cool. Yeah, the um, I was kind of curious. That I was thinking of, as I was thinking about the whole thing. It's like, what? When do you want? Or what would be a good way of framing? Telling someone or for someone to know that they need to walk away from an interview or, you know, or a potential job because, you know, it's like I, I think I've been in a few of them where uh, like, yeah, it's it's obvious they don't that what they want and what I do is not going to match, you know, and, it, you know, I, I've done it a few times where I've been able to I've, I've been secure in myself to say, 
you know, hey, Pastor, thanks for the interview, but we're not a real good match, and so we'll just, I'm just going to stop it right here. And and I think that takes some uh, some knowledge about oneself. And I'm just kind of curious what y'all's experience is that is like, you know, people just pursue it, pursue it until they get it, and then they find they're in a bad place, you know, but is, or if there's, if there's signs that you can see uh, along the way. I don't know. I don't know if there's really a question in there that I can frame well. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we're with you. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that concerns us is when we see people that post on their resumes. I'm happy to work for any denomination. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, Catholic, Pentecostal, it doesn't matter. Fundamentalist, liberal, I don't care. Any denomination is fine for me. What that <laughs> indicates is a, a chronic lack of self-awareness mm -hmm. and an inability to say, no, this is sort of who I am. And uh, one of the things, we, we actually did a seminar this morning, and one of the things that Jeff talked with uh, the group about was identifying what are your, what are the things that you'd like to see in the church where you're, you're going to be coming to next, and what are the deal breakers? And mm -hmm. being able to acknowledge, you know, if they have this kind of worship, or if they have this sort of theology, or whatever it is, that's going to be a deal breaker for me. Or, you know, for we, we like to say, you know, our, our spouses should have veto power. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that sort of plays in it as well. But, you know, those are, those are a few of the things where we say you ought to be able to know, um, you know, as you walk in, uh, you're going to walk away. But once you get in, mm -hmm. once you get into the church, if you have not done your due diligence, and you find out, oh, this isn't as great a match. As long as you're in that position, integrity requires that you continue to support and enthusiastically pour yourself into the vision of that church mm -hmm. rather than trying to come in subversively and to change the church. 